Hi everyone, I'm Joanna Penn from thecreativepen.com and today I'm here with Claire Lydon. Hi Claire. Hi Joanna, lovely to be here. Oh, great to have you on the show. Just a little introduction. Claire is a London-based writer of contemporary lesbian romance as well as the host of the Lesbian Book Club. And today we're talking about writing lesbian fiction. Um, but Claire, just before we get into it, tell us a bit more about you and your writing background. Okay, well, um, I started, um, I worked for nearly eight years as a journalist and editor in magazines. Um, so I worked on design magazines, football magazines, uh, food magazines and gaming magazines. So I know more about gaming than I ever really wanted to know because I'm not a gamer. Um, and I worked for Manu and Chelsea magazines and being Ooh. a Tottenham fan, that's that's very bad. Um, and then I was a music journalist online for six years where mm. I interviewed pop stars and went to gigs and lived my smash hits dream um <laughs> cool what, who was the the best band you ever interviewed oh god everyone always asked me this and i never remember when i was doing it so um i interviewed bruno mars four times which oh, um which i thought was you know by the fourth time i was like all right bruno he's like all right <laughs> <laughs> you know uh I, I think the the love the nicest um pop star was tom from keen um and i was a big keen fan as well so um and got to go to you know lots of private shows and things so it was pretty cool i did leave my smash it dream um and uh, oh i did also once sit in a room with kanye west Ooh. and uh, and he while we were listening to his album it was about sort of 50 journalists and he sat on a on a stage and watched us all and chastised people if they weren't sort of you know nodding along very well so <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, good. And then, and then, I, yeah. and then I ran Vodafone Music for a couple of years, and um, their editorial team for the UK and Europe. And then they made me redundant, which is when I thought they gave me a chunk of money, and I thought, um, you know, hey, why not dig that book out that I've been writing for the last three years and see if I can do something with it. Um, now, I, I didn't really know much about lesbian romance at that point. I, I, I read my first lesbian romance when I was on um, when I was travelling uh, around the world in 2003. I found it in a in a hostel in New Zealand in one of their sharing libraries. Um, but I don't think I came across another book for about five years. Um, and then I started reading it, and and all the stuff I read was very US set. So I thought, hey, I could do this, but I could I could set it in the UK. Um, and there were UK set ones, but I I didn't I hadn't seen them. I didn't read them. Um, I was reading more print books at the time, and so um, I had a book after it, and I thought. Um, I've got the money. I'll take a year out. I'll see if I can do it. So I finished it actually while I was still at work because they sat my boss first. So I had three months of working. <laughs> so they paid me to finish my book. And then I wrote the next one in the next four months. And then I sort of dilly dallied a bit. And then I went to a lesbian fiction, a lesbian arts festival. Um, and I spoke to some um, people there. And I, oh, I'd already sent it off to a lesbian publisher at that point. Mm. There are none in the UK. Mm -hmm. um so or, or there weren't in 2013 anyway so i sent it off to one of five big ones in the u.s um they all begin with b for some reason <laughs> um and they said hey it will take three months and i thought oh great um and they sent me a rejection letter on christmas day <laughs> which i was, thought was really nice of them um and covered in red pen and they kind of said it's it's good but it needs some work so i went to this arts festival and i met uk lesbian fiction authors and they were all self-published and they were all very encouraging and they all helped me out a lot along the way. Um, and it was their encouragement and advice. Um, four months later, I published in March 2014. And, yeah, I haven't looked back since. Um, I've done four novels and two novellas in that two years. And I've got two novellas and two novels coming out this year, unless I, you know, conk out from overwork. <laughs> um, uh, but, yeah, so, yeah, it's going well. I mean, the first book, I launched it, and it was called London Calling, and it was a story of a modern lesbian in London town. And uh, it... It flew off the shelf straight away, much to my surprise. So, mm. yeah. And, and how autobiographical is that? Is that first novel? Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> well, you know, is all, she a music all, journalist? <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's not. So that's good, isn't it? Uh, she hasn't interviewed Bruno Mars. Um, I, I think there were bits of bits of um, me in it, but not not super duper autobiographical. Um, I, if I was as stupid as Jess my lead character I'd be a bit upset with myself I think uh, but she does drink a lot of tequila and I have been known to do that and um she yeah she she just sort of kind of bumbles along and um gets into some <laughs> quite bad scrapes so it's it's a it's a it's a funny humorous look at at the modern lesbian in London 
Yeah, which is it's fantastic. We'll come back to humour because I do want to ask you about that. But um, I want to get into the genre uh, because you, I, I heard you mention Les Fick on your podcast, which made me smile because that, that's just so brilliant. Um, so can you tell us a bit about the sub-genres of lesbian fiction? Because obviously it's not just one thing. Um, you know, I'm thinking, is there a, a sci-fi lesbian fiction sub-genre, that type of thing? Uh, that there is, oh. is the short so yes so <laughs> your dreams can come true um yeah lesbic is just shortening of lesbian fiction and uh, yes it has many genres um romance is the most popular as as you might expect um mystery thriller or also very popular because um uh, a lesbian detective has been the stall a stalwart of lesbian fiction for mm. since the dawn of time um sci-fi is pretty big um, supernatural, historical fiction, um, and YA and NA are also very popular. I think that's they're popular generally as well, aren't they? So whatever is popular in the mainstream will probably be, be mirrored in in the world of lesbian fiction. Um, new adult in the last couple of years have been huge, mm. and um, and young young adult as well, uh, because that typically is sort of coming out, coming of age, mm. and while coming out stories have lessened mm. um, because. People don't, it's not such a big deal anymore, which is great, but they're still around. So, um, yeah, so that's a really popular genre. And also um, erotica, too, is popular. Yeah, and I think that's really important, isn't it? Because um, just because it's a lesbian book with a lesbian character doesn't mean it's erotica, and some people might be expecting that. (laughs) They might be very disappointed. (laughs) I mean, my books do always have a sex scene or two in them, uh, but not every not every lesbian romance does, and not every every lesbian fiction book has. In fact, quite a lot of them don't. So. if it's just sex, you won't go for erotica, as in most things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And in, mm. I'm interested there in the in the idea of coming out and the young adult, new adult thing, because obviously in the West, in in the UK, I mean, less so in the fundamentalist Christian US, I imagine. But I mean, if we're talking about a global publishing market, where, um, say, in I think. Uh, I won't name any countries, but there are some countries where it can be very dangerous uh, to be gay in any manner. Um, So do you think that those markets, uh, there are new voices emerging or that these types of books will help people? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think definitely that I know um, another lesbian fiction author has told me she gets a lot of um, correspondence from people just coming out. And I think because she wrote a book about... um, a student falling in love with a teacher so so it's kind of deals with young adult stuff and I think um there are many many um like since the advent of the kindle and digital publishing um as with all your all um stuff that there's been a huge explosion of lesbian fiction probably since about 2012 and mm. so there are more and more authors constantly coming on on to the market um which is great and and I'm sure that there'll be more and more authors now in all different countries telling their experience as well. Obviously, the ones that dominate are UK and US voices. I mean, most most stuff is set in the US, so mm. it's mainly US voices that dominate. But of course, there's a lot of places there where it's still not okay to be gay. So um, they still mm. tell um, the coming out stories and the difficulties um, mm. of that. And and just kind of taking that further, is it, um, you know, there are a lot of political agendas, I guess. I mean, for example, just the marriage, uh, the, you know, books that portray a marriage uh, mm-hmm. for lesbians and gay people. Is that something that people tackle in, in an issue manner or do, you, it, do people put that within the books just as part of the story? Um, I think both, really. Um, I tend to, I, I, my books tend to be happy, happy. So, um, so <laughs> I tend to have it as part of the story. Um, and there will be angst about it, you know, like family, mm. uh, family reactions to marriage, because that's something that's happened since uh, marriage has become legal, is that a lot of people have said, oh, God, you know, coming out as so telling your parents you're going to get married is like coming out again, because it's mm. another hurdle. And I think that's reflected in um, in some of the fiction, uh, but yeah, I mean, issues are definitely dealt with in in lesbian fiction, and issues like domestic violence and mm. um, and marriage and coming out and, and you know basic societal issues. Um, and I've got to say as well, main, there's mainstream lesbian fiction as well. So uh, literary fiction, I mean, so like Sarah Waters and Jeanette Winston and some of her books. Yeah, so, and that's interesting because I believe I don't know about Sarah Winters, but Jeanette Winterson is a lesbian. 
Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. So that was one of my other questions is what does does lesbian fiction define itself by the orientation of the character or also by the orientation of the author? Uh, because, you know, this, this, well, where are the lines drawn, I guess? Um, lesbian fiction it is characterised by having lesbians as your main characters, not side characters. That's it. Anyone can write lesbian fiction. Um, the sexual orientation of the writer is irrelevant um, because you're making things up. <laughs> <laughs> so essentially, anyone can do it. I am a lesbian, I'm writing lesbian fiction, but you don't have to be a lesbian to write lesbian fiction. As long as the lead characters are lesbians, then um, and the lesbian voice is heard, um, mm. then then absolutely you can. I mean, get, um, I don't know the, the percentage of, of um, lesbian fiction that is written by women or lesbians. Um, I know gay romance is mainly read by women. Mm. And I heard a stat recently that over 50% is now written by women. So and I, I think maybe possibly more than that. Um, so there's a huge market there and women are writing a lot of it. Um, some people are uncomfortable that lesbian stories are being written by non-lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what but, I was wondering about. <laughs> but it's just the human experience really, isn't it? And anyone can have a go at that, you know. Um, and I think... As long as you're not hiding it, because there was some um, there was some controversy a, a couple of years ago when I first started about some people writing um, lesbian fiction pretending to be lesbians when they were actually mm. men, and I think that's when people get annoyed about it and understandably. So just be honest about who you are, and because um, I've read lesbian fiction by men and it's been good, so. <laughs> Well, I think that's the point, isn't it? I mean, especially when, let's face it, we're all just human. And, yeah. you know, we write, if we write a, like I've written a Nigerian Swedish man, uh, you know, I have lesbians in my book, um, but in one of my books, but they're not the main character. So that wouldn't be lesbian fiction. But I'm interested yeah. also with someone like Val McDermott, who is one of Britain's best loved, well known crime writers, who does have lesbian characters, but I don't. I don't think any of them are the protagonists. So where would she fall in the in the spectrum? Um, I, I haven't read any Val McDermott because I'm not a crime ah, fan. So too dark I, for I, you. Yeah, she's, I like happy books. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did see, I, I just did my podcast today and um, I do a rundown of the Amazon lesbian fiction charts for the US and the UK as a, as a starting point of that. And I saw that Val McDermott was in the charts um, today and I've never seen her in the charts in the top 20s in the US and UK. Um, so so that was interesting. Mm. Um, uh, I I would say if you if you haven't got maybe maybe if you have like a lot of secondary characters you could also be <laughs> or if you are gets, a famous lesbian yeah, exactly maybe she she gets away with it because she is a famous lesbian so yeah. Maybe, yeah maybe they make an exception for her. <laughs> come on Val it's, uh, interestingly that non-lesbian authors um, there was a the Goldie Awards are mm. um, the biggest lesbian fiction awards it's the Golden Crown Literary Society and in 2015 they had their first transgender uh, female to male, um, oh, they gave a goldie to a transgender male writing an anthology of lesbian fiction. So I think that was the first time that they'd given it out to somebody who... Yeah. <laughs> that is slightly confusing. And I, you know... <laughs> I hope everyone's okay with me saying that. So, but that is quite interesting, isn't it? And I think that's yeah. so important. And this week, was it this week or last week, we had a uh, described as non-binary um, person come out to President Obama while he was in London. Um, she she got up and said, you know, I don't, I'm not on either scale. And obviously, gender is different to sexual orientation as yeah. well, which can complicate things. But yeah. <laughs> it, I think what's so What's so great is that we do have all of these different spectrums and we're all obviously have different mindsets about it too, like you, like you said about the readers. So, so what you mentioned a little bit about readers, but what, who are the readers of your lesbian fiction and others, you know, other authors, you know? Um, well, I think majority, as you would expect, are um, lesbians, uh, but not as men, not People think that lesbian fiction is only read by lesbians. It's not true. Um, just like any book, anybody can read it. And once you write it, you cannot control who reads it. And that's great. I like mm -hmm. that. Um, but um, so, you know, obviously all my family read it and they're all big lovers of lesbian fiction now. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, um, my, my dad read my f first one of mine recently. That was interesting. Um, and... Uh, 
but then as again um i think with my fourth book my christmas book all of christmas i i started to get letters from a lot of men so clearly i don't know why but men started to maybe men love christmas books um but I start to get a lot of letters from men and I, I've always had male readers. Um, and I don't think that's that surprising because as I said, you know, um, women read gay fiction and men read lesbian fiction. Uh, it's not just, I get, you know, I have, um, readers from straight women, um, gay women, straight, straight men and gay men, gay men read, um, a lot of lesbian fiction as well. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of crossover. Um, and I, I have heard, um, one man said to me that he, it's a window on a world he'll never experience. And so he's, he, he's interested in reading it. So that's an interesting take. Which is true of any book. I mean, it, isn't it really? That's kind of why a lot of the reasons we read is a window into that. I mean, I guess maybe I write darker things that I will never experience. Mm. Um, and, you know, I guess, yeah, it, that's a really interesting a really interesting thing and well then also I was just thinking about the prizes what is there a Polari prize is that another one that's yeah there's a yeah there's a Polari prize for first first fiction so your debut author um and that's every year Polari is a literary salon that runs in the South Bank uh once a month mm. and that's that's pretty big um they get like you know two three hundred people once a month ago and and um, i've read at polari and it's a really cool event mm. um there's the golden crown literary society um awards as i say that's yearly they have a conference every july in um somewhere in america it changes venue every year mm. um and there's the lambda literary awards the lammies to their to their mates um and that's lgbt mm. um and then uh, there's the rainbow awards and that's online, sort of a, a jury of about 500 people all around the world, read the books and vote. And that's um, LGBT. Yes, super interesting. So then I wanted to know, uh, what are the things, if people want to include lesbian characters, which of course, we should encourage everyone to include different characters who are not Everybody like Everybody should have one, yes. Yeah, everyone should book. have yeah. one <laughs> in their book. Just stick one in. But no, uh, what what are the stereotypes that drive you nuts about um, how lesbians are portrayed in books and film? Um, I, I think I think it's got a lot better, really. Um, I think that um, most most stuff I most stuff I read these days doesn't doesn't wind me up any more than any other book, really. Um, I think we come on leaps and bounds, and that's reflected in society. Um, well, the society we live in, as we said, anyway. Um, you know, when I was growing up. I remember watching a documentary about um, some lesbians and they were in a backyard and they all had greased hair and they would uh, had dungarees and they were doing up a motorbike. And I thought, oh, God, I haven't got any dungarees. And I don't know anything about motorbikes. So, um, <laughs> But hooray, it's all come on now. Uh, I mean, I, so I suppose things, things about being upset or, you know, the struggle. I mean, everybody does struggle because, it, because it's still not, you know the societal norm what's expected in of a way but i like to i like to be positive in my books and reflect to people that are um that are happy with their sexuality and it's just another facet of their being it's not their whole being um mm. you know so we've come on a great leaps and bounds since like you know the well of loneliness radcliffe hall which is a seminal lesbian text but god my god it's depressing so um, <laughs> um you know it's <laughs> we've come on quite a long long way since then Mm. Well, I guess I guess a lot of earlier generations in the West, um, you know, potentially were unhappy because they might never have met the person that they really wanted to be with, or or never were able to to come out to their family. Um, mm. So perhaps that's why more of that is miserable. But if if people are wanting, again, I think. Uh, if people want to do any research, should they literally just read books like yours that feature lesbians or are there things that they could read or watch that might give them an insight? Um, well, I mean, there are, there are obviously really big selling authors in all, in all the different genres. Um, I can give you some examples of mm, those if you'd like. That would be great. Um, yeah. Um, so, the, the the one I first got into was Georgia Beers, um, and she's American, and she writes lesbian romance, very contem contemporary, cosy, I suppose, cosy lesbian romance. Um, she's very good at it, um, and uh, you know all her books are great. Um, Jerry Hill is another classic; he's quite reliable. She writes lesbian romance and lesbian mystery, sort of, yeah, mystery cop drama mm. things. Um, 
and if you want a mystery kind of thriller, Carrie Hunter's very good. Her Dark Peak series is awesome. Um, it's like if Scott and Bailey were lesbians <laughs> and younger. Well, well the, the older one was younger. <laughs> And, you know, we will, we've all thought about that. Was that just me? Um, Sci-fi, Fletcher Delancey's very good. Um, her Care for Non series is awesome. And she's been on my podcast and she's very lovely. And and she also met her wife uh, as her wife contacted her um, because she liked her writing. So that's oh. another... That's an, and I've heard that happen quite a lot. I've, I know a few authors who've met their partners because the, the, they met a reader. So... <laughs> So you know that's a, that's a nice byproduct, isn't it? That is. Um, yeah. <laughs> and there are new authors coming out all the time. I read one last year. Um, a debut author, G. Benson, wrote a book called All the Little Moments, and it was about a woman whose brother and his wife die in a car crash, and she's left with the guardianship of his kids. And it was just brilliantly written. I, I sobbed from the back page one. I'm a sucker for a for a sob story. So uh, yeah, that was really really good. Um, but yeah, and obviously mine. Yes. Obviously yeah. yours. And just um, yeah. uh, just tell people where they can find your podcast as well in case people fancy the, the rundown. Um, yeah, I do a podcast once a month and it's part of the Lesbian Lounge podcast. Um, so it's my section of it is called the Lesbian Book Club. But if you search for the Lesbian Lounge on iTunes or Stitcher or Podbean, um, that should come up. And yeah, and then it, I've done 19 episodes now. So 19 months it's been running. Um yeah, and, and uh, people seem to like it, so that's good. Yeah, that's very that's very cool. Um, so obviously, regardless of the gender or sexual orientation of the protagonists, uh, you write romance, which I don't think is that different, regardless of who's going through it, to be honest. Um, and you've got this latest series, All I Want. Um, tell us a bit about that, and, and what are the important story tropes of a romance, no matter who's in it? Well, all I want, the All I Want series, so I first wrote, my first book is London Calling, and then I wrote a follow-up, um, which follows one of the second character, secondary characters in her quest for romance. Um, and then the All I Want series is a bit different in that it um, it has the two lead characters getting together in the first book, and then I'm following them in, as they progress in their romance in a calendar year. So I've had All I Want for Valentine's, All I Want for Spring, and there's going to be a summer, autumn, and then um, forever. Oh. So, so beautiful. <laughs> See what I did there. Um, <laughs> um, so that's a little bit different because it's following two characters who already got together. Um, so that probably flies in the face of what mo most romance, mm. <laughs> most people say romance should be. But I just thought I'd try it. It's something different, um, and people seem to like it. So so that's good. Um, but I suppose romance books generally should have the first tingle of, of love, some trepidation, um, dilemma, first kiss, first sex, if you're going to include that, first fight, and then commitment, betrayal, and then uh, love conquers all and happy ever after, basically. Yes. O and, always a happy ever after. And, and that's so funny you said that, because I was, I don't know why I was looking at some romance books, because I don't really read romance, and I saw this <laughs> has H-E-A in it, like in the sales description on Amazon, really? it says... Oh my has H-E-A and then I was like what is H-E-A and I had to I had to google it and it's happily ever after so there's like what do they call that urban slang <laughs> this book has H-E-A <laughs> see I've never I, I never heard that until I started writing romance and I still didn't hear it till about a year in so I don't think I'd know what it was if I was a reader reading a blurb I'd be like what's that that is yeah. so hardcore isn't it but that yeah. but that that to me like you just said about a weepy like wanting a weepy that's what I would say is a love story so Nicholas Sparks who is probably the most well-known man writing in a romantic genre but I think Nicholas Sparks writes a love story because you know the notebook in particular is that you know real weepy one whereas your books are a romance because they have an HEA um yeah. and it's not a weepy right so that's yeah, good no, no 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 weepies yet but never say never yeah I mean with my with my second book The Long Weekend um it's about a group of friends who go away to celebrate 20 years since they met at university so and one reviewer said it's like a lesbian Peter's friends oh and nice so, so it so I like that quote yeah so it is it's like an ensemble piece and it wasn't a traditional happy ending like some people had a happy ending some people didn't mm. and so it's not that wasn't strictly romance and so I think that confused some people because I put it in the romance category, but then it probably shouldn't have been in romance because then I probably took it out. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but all my others have HEAs. 
And I think that's super important. And uh, I was uh, I was at a, a literary festival this last weekend, and I was just thinking about the expectations of readers. And uh, the chair of the panel I was on said that Mo Hader, who I do you know Mo Hader? She writes really dark crime. He said that right. Mo Hader is a cosy writer, and I just went nuts on it and said you can't call a writer like that a cozy writer it's nothing to do with what you think as as a critic as a literary critic it's what the Mm -hmm. reader thinks isn't it you have to give the you have to fit in the category that the reader is expecting yeah absolutely and and you know there are certain certain ones that are very popular in in lesbian romance um i don't know if it's the same in in straight romance I, i don't read that much but but um, things like Friends to Lovers, that's a really popular one. And, and that's my All I Want for Christmas series. That's a Friends to Lovers one. Um, and Second Chances, that's really popular. So, you know, meeting someone that you, you had a crush on, your first love again 20 years later. Um, and and the class thing is always always a good one. Mm. Um, and, oh, is that um, the billionaire, the billionaire lesbian? Yeah. <laughs> No, I guess that's that's more a that's more a money one, like the class thing, like you know the upper class, and then um, Claire Ashton did a really good book called That Certain Something, and that was about a woman who like owned the mag, she owned the magazine, or she was really high up in the magazine anyway, and then the the sort of intern who was hired as a photographer, and they fell in love, and so there was a lot of class things in that, um, but but yeah, but the, the, with London Calling, I. I think I confused some of my readers because I had a, I had a, the lead character, she falls in love with um, a, a woman she meets, but she also moves in with her best, one of her best friends and sister-in-law who happens to be a lesbian as well. And so my readers were confused, but I kind of did that to, to keep them guessing. Mm. <laughs> but I think sometimes people like to know what's going to happen. And so that, you know, uh, some people, I did get emails saying, I wish you got together with Kate. And I thought, oh, well. Oh, the flat, the flatmate instead of the, the flatmate. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. it's difficult. That's the thing, isn't it? And oh, just on that class thing, that film Carol um, that with Kate Blanchett, is mm. that, that, that's a class, a yeah. class sort of liter- a literary romance with class, yeah. isn't it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All of the above. Yeah. I mean, that is classic, classic uh, class sort of uh, romance and, I haven't. I, I'm. I've actually ordered that book because I haven't read it. Um, mm. The actual the book, but I absolutely loved the film. I mean, mm. it was so beautifully shot and well done. Um, and Kate Blanchett is just fantastic in it, and and really Mara. Um, but yes, that is an absolute classic. And I guess she was. She would be a almost billionaire lesbian, but but not with the rights because it was in the 50s. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, I do want to ask you about humour because, and again, this has nothing to do with lesbian fiction. Humour in general is one of those really tricky things. And I personally struggle with humour. Um, so I wanted to ask you about that. Um, how do you write humour? What are your tips for, for putting humour into a book? Um, yeah, I, I think... All through my writing career, I've always done humour. Um, my my reviews of, of pop of gigs were always humorous, and my blog posts were always humorous. And I've carried that through to my writing. Um, I think I think humour is just all about the the general things that are true with writing generally. So be be specific. Um, the humour is all about the detail, mind down to the to the minute of the of it, and you'll always find humour in in a lot of things i mean i, I think uh, i'm not comparing myself in any way <laughs> to the um late great victoria wood but she was an absolute master at that wasn't she just getting to the absolute minute of day-to-day life and really making fun of it and and making fun of yourself is also a really mm. funny thing so making having if it's written in the first person um making having the lead character make fun of themselves um for instance i've got a I've got a, a thing in my All I Want for Spring book and it's about the lead character gets on a Segway and it's quite a... Which is it, funny in itself. It's funny in itself. <laughs> and she's not very good at it and it's, you know, it, it, I've had a lot of comments about that that section. And I actually did go on a Segway in, in Madrid for our anniversary. My wife and I's first anniversary went to Madrid and, and for some reason I booked a Segway and I I think my friend told me it was a great way to see the city. It, it wasn't, she lied. And... Um, and it was just two of the most excruciating hours of my life. So, but when I came back, I wrote it down in detail because I thought I could use that 
uh, mm. in, and so I adapted it for the character. So pay attention to to what's going happening in your own life and what's going on around you, um, and also the way you write it can be very can affect sort of comic timing. So shorter sentences create drama and and create funny um, and start a new starting a new paragraph can have an impact yeah just short sentences like it, it's like the boom 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 of the thing and really and just edit edit well I mean you're not you're not going to get a funny joke every time on the first go so edit well until to edit edit into into submission um and a lot of my humor is in dialogue I I like writing quippy funny dialogue um mm-hmm. so read it out loud and make sure it is and not just in your head um but yeah, I I I like to include humour in all my books, and even even the even the slightly darker ones. I don't really have dark books, but the slightly darker ones all have humour in them. Yeah, and that's uh, that's so important. And I know that I do have beats of lightness, uh, but not humour. And it's one of those things. I was just I'm, I'm always doing writing courses, and the course that I'm on at the moment, um, the the exercise from last night, funny as we talk about this, was to write 500 words with of a humorous opening to a book, and it was awful I mean I just sat here just going oh my goodness and I ended up drinking two glasses of wine before I could actually manage anything that and it it was truly shocking so one of my goals is like I've just got to write you know you you have to practice these things don't you if they're not one of your skills um but absolutely and I, I think I think probably all my years as a journalist um, I always tried to introduce humour. I remember writing a story, you know, on a really dry subject and my editors used to send it back to me and say, well, what the hell is going on here, Claire? Why is this funny? Why is this a funny joke now? <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, no one's so, going to read it otherwise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's all coming into good stead now, right? Mm. And do, what about your music background? Is that something that you bring into your books? Um, not not so far yet, but I, I am planning a... a um, a story about a pop star who who's pressured um to stay in the closet because it's not the done thing to come out and oh, that's it's Ricky Martin it's, yeah. <laughs> that's it's so funny I look at I look at the books you know because I had total crush on Ricky Martin when I what how old would I been like 16 or something um and then and then it was I, you look at videos now and go how did we not know he was gay <laughs> Michael, isn't it? I mean, God, you look back at the uh, Club Tropicana video and you just think... <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of crazy, isn't it? But yeah. no, anyway. Um, and We'll be in there for that. Yeah, no, that's, that is fun. Um, and then I wondered about your tips on marketing. So if people are... I mean, obviously, you've got a lesbian fiction podcast, so that's very targeted. Um, but what are... Um, and obviously, categories... So using lesbian categories, what are your other sort of tips for marketing to the lesbian market? Um, again, it's it's pretty similar to marketing books in general, but um, just mining down to know the, know the market and know what people want. Uh, for instance, you know, if you're going to write a romance, make sure it's got a HEA. <laughs> Otherwise, your books will be slammed. And yeah, and, and romance Readers tend to want happy, happy books, and they don't like people who are too um, annoying or mean. So don't write a mean character. Mm. Um, and you know there there are key sort of lesbian um, Facebook groups and forums. So get into those and um, you know get get known. Um, I I tried, but I'm not very good at it. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, not, <laughs> I'm just not very good at it. Um, and. Uh, um, Facebook ads, I'm going to try those. I haven't tried them yet, um, but I did buy Mark Dawson's course, but I haven't done it yet. So I'm going to do that because I didn't really have, I was waiting to have a few more books out. Mm. Um, and obviously, Lesbian Podcast, so um, I do one, as you say. There's another. There's a couple of other ones. The Lesbian Review is a good review site, and they, they do a few different podcasts. Um, the Girls' Hour, The Girl Pond, The Cocktail Hour. There are a few out there, um, but there, are, there aren't that many that are lesbian fiction specific. So mm. the the market is still open. Um, and then you've got all the, there's a lot of magazines. So magazines are dwindling because, you know, mm. as all they gay bars. In general. Yeah, magazines yeah. are dwindling in general. And the gay bars are shutting because people don't think you need gay bars anymore. It's, it's all a, a cultural shift, a societal shift. But After Ellen is the key website, AfterEllen.com. Oh. Um and Curve magazine in the US, uh, Diva magazine in the UK. There are key blogs. 
um, and the there's a, a channel on YouTube called uh, sorry a, a website and it's like a lesbian YouTube hmm. and it's called One More Lesbian so that's a good one to get on like I've had book trailers featured on that and they get quite a lot of views when you get them on there so that's really cool but it, you know it, it's like anything just be yourself be genuine um, mm-hmm. don't try and, and be open to readers contacting you and 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 reply to them <laughs> don't ignore them <laughs> that's, that's a good tip <laughs> yeah and um and there's a and video i think video is very underused i mean i know i listened to your interview is it michael Laron? michael Laron, yeah. yeah yeah and and i think he was saying the same thing overall wasn't he and it's, it's a very underused medium and i think if you can do videos um i have done a video i got a friend of mine to do it and i did a day in the life of an author and it was a bit of a tongue-in-cheek <laughs> me watching come dine with me and eating pot noodles and, and then going to the pub so and that got a lot of, a lot of uh hits so i think if you can do videos with humor there's a lesbian fiction author uk one called kiki archer and she does a, a video series called lesbian living and it's just f- little funny two three minute shorts and she does she does really well with those so i think um i'm always thinking i should do more videos as well <laughs> <laughs> well I, it is interesting isn't it because i think everyone's always interested in anyone's life you know mm. it's actually not that you're a lesbian or that you're a writer or you know that you're in London it's kind of well it's all those things and these are the things that are our daily life but actually people on the other side of the world might find them super interesting you know it's, yeah. it's kind of weird like I, I last saw you briefly at the London Book Fair and you know we just did a really short like one minute video of it and because people don't if they haven't been they don't know what it's like so you know it's it, I think it's the same I haven't actually done like a tour of my house or anything uh, is, is that what you mean you should absolutely do that <laughs> we need to see your husband we never see his face see he's all this mythical, mythical he was at the London book fair oh was he <laughs> yeah where's your wife come on yeah. <laughs> she's I, at work somebody's got to be <laughs> yeah no fair enough um okay and then also on marketing I also wanted to ask you about cover design because I remember and I remember the first time I met you I was very rude to you um which is terrible you you showed me a picture of your book cover and I think it was on a business card I don't or was it the actual book anyway and it's this lovely it was a postcard yeah yeah. it's a postcard and it was this this lovely London skyline and I was like oh yeah yeah it looks like a literary fiction kind of novel really nice cover and then you said it was a lesbian book and I was like it doesn't look like a lesbian book (laughs) there's no women on the front um so I wondered uh what what your thoughts are on branding for lesbian fiction and and how have you changed your current books it's a it's still a a an odd it's still a question I can't answer fully Mm. um I think when I first started like you say I did I made classic mistakes I didn't I, I I didn't know anything about I just published the book and I did a cover that I liked so mm. um <laughs> it is and, lovely <laughs> yeah <laughs> and I did a cover that I liked and I did the same for the second book and um and what I found was that I clearly like um graphics and typography and yeah like sort of they look like nice literary fiction or travel books um and so so I, I did make those mistakes but having said that my you know they both sold pretty well and I you know the London Calling cover, the first one, it, it came second in a in a in the Rainbow Awards for best cover of the year. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> and, you know, and um and loads of people said how much they love the cover. So I am still thinking about changing it, but um it's kind of, you know, it's on my to-do list. Um mm. but so what is the best cover? I, like a lot of people would think it would be two women on the cover for lesbian romance. But I had a look, like when I was looking at the charts today, um, it, of the 20 there, there were only three with two women in the mm. top 20 on the on the charts. Um, having a woman or a body part or some sort like a face or a body part, that sounds bad, doesn't <laughs> <Right>. it? <laughs> a severed leg. <laughs> Not one of those body parts. <laughs> so like a face or a... Or you know, some people put like um, sort of ge- the the bum of the gene. You know what I mean? Mm. Like that sounds bad. Or hands held together, or something like that. I think having a body part of some sort, a, a face, is a good one to have on there. And I think I will maybe try out and see if if it changes anything. Um, but I just 
I did for the for my book three, so for the London Callings follow up, I put a picture of two women nearly kissing on the cover, and that sold that sold well. Um, but still, my biggest seller and the one that continues to sell the best is London Calling, the first one with the London with the cover London on it. So, so it's a it's a conundrum. And how, <laughs> and how well does that book sell in America? Is is it is do you notice the difference between the UK and the US? Um. They're, they're fairly even. I, I sell slightly more in the UK, but um, um, it sells. It they're fairly even. Oh, um, it's really it, it's really a couple of percentage mm. difference um, volume wise. So um, yeah, and and then for for my all I want series, so all I want for Christmas, I decided to go down more down the um, sort of lesbian romance chick lit route, and mm. so I so I put a put a woman on the cover, but a graphic woman. Um, so a graphical woman, not a graphic woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're already struggling with this bit. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, people can go and look at uh, the books of Claire Lydon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, and so that that's going to be sort of, that series is very branded and it's very different. Mm. Um, so we'll see how, and that, that seems to be going down pretty well. I think for my next book, I am going to go, Try something a bit different, maybe, but keep my author branding so my name at the top. Um, but I may well go. I, I think I will go down the route of two women again and see. But I don't notice a discernible difference in mm. the sales. So it's a it's a conundrum. Yeah, and and the biggest problem with cover design, of course, is you can't split test it anyway. So you know you can't ever know because even if you put a different cover on a different book, it doesn't compare to the you know the one you had so that's it's very a difficult choice um but no it's fascinating really interested in that okay so i think we are pretty much out of time that's been super interesting so where can people find you and all your books online um so you can go to um clairelyden.co.uk that's c-l-a-r-e-l-y-d-o-n uh i'm on twitter um, at Claire Lydon. I'm, I'm probably best at Twitter. Um, Facebook is Claire Lydon Author. Um, I'm on Instagram at Claire Fick. Um, and I should be on Pinterest more, but I'm not. But, um, but you know, you can, you can pin something if you like. <laughs> I might see it in a couple of months. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, probably through Facebook and Twitter are the ones I'm most uh, on. Fantastic. Thanks so much for your time, Claire. That was great. Thank you, Joanna.